Today is Friday, um, August 5th, 2022, and today I'm going to basically work again with um, DOM modification, but I'm going to start from scratch and make um, a website, or I guess like the landing page um, with HTML and CSS about like, I don't know, bears, and then I'll change it to butterflies using JS. So that's the plan for today. So we'll start with doc type HTML. Um, I'll put in my HTML over here. And then I'll put in my head tags. Oops. And then I'll put in my body tags. So basically I'm saying about the viewport, I need the width to be equal to the device width. So that kind of works with the responsive um, aspect of my site. It's basically saying if I were to be on a phone, then it's not gonna give me the desktop view of my site, it's gonna give me the mobile responsive view of my site. All right, um, so for the body tag, I'll start with a class container. And in CSS, I'll just target the container with a dot because it's a class and give it a border, five pixels, black colored border, make sure it's a solid line border, give it a height of 100 VH. Um, so I'll do something like that and then I'll kind of get rid of any margin and padding that there is. So, oops, I'll get rid of any margin, zero that out and padding, zero that out. Um, the asterisk is a, or the star is an everything selector, so it selects every aspect or every element on the page. All right, so inside the container, I'm going to have a um, showcase, or I guess a hero section. I usually call it a showcase. And inside the showcase, there is a header, or at least, you know what, not really. I'll have a header here. I'll give it a class header. And um, for the showcase itself, inside, I think I'm going to say have something like showcase content or maybe just content. And then it's just going to be kind of like um, a paragraph maybe, like, um, I don't know, the catchphrase or something. All right, and then let me see. The header is going to contain the logo, which should be an ID because it's only going to be, there's only going to be one logo on this page. Um, and then it should also contain a nav bar. So that's going to be the navigation bar where all the links are going to be. A navigation bar is usually, well, I like to put an unordered list. So it's basically um, a list with um, bullet points. So each unordered list has a list item and I would like to have my list items to be links. So that lead to nowhere for now. And I'll just kind of copy that a bit over here. Paste that in there, paste that in there. All right. So for the showcase itself, um, I'm going to give it a background of like an image. I'm going to find um, maybe this one. Mm, I don't think I can take it. Okay, so let me go to Unsplash and search up like pictures of bears and see what comes up. All right, so maybe, all right, so I found this one, which I think is really, really cool. So I'll copy the image address by right clicking and then I'll paste that for the URL over here. And then I'll make sure to give it a height, maybe 100%. And then let's see, I'll also make sure the background size is the cover of, or it covers a container, which in this case is a showcase. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. All right, so for the header, um, that's kind of the white part at the top. I need that to have a position of absolute for now. 
um, and then I'm going to change everything in it to be white so I can kind of see it a little bit better and probably also give it a border so I could see it um, five pixels um, white solid so I'll be able to see that and probably I'll give the width I'll set that to like 80% and then maybe move it from the left 25% so it can be in the center let me see what it looks like over here all right so a little weird though I need to go back to the showcase and set the position to kind of be in the center so that it kind of goes more upwards maybe that works a bit better all right um let's see and then let me move this header a little bit more to the left all right maybe a little bit more all right so that works and then what i'll do is um i don't know let me let me get icons eight maybe i can get like a icon of a bear so I'll go ahead and search a bear over here. See if I can get something like that. Um, maybe something like that. And then I can change the color, although the link is going to be a lot. Um... I could do copy image address and then I could go back up to my code and where the logo is um, honestly I don't have to do that there I could just go here and change the logo to um, well maybe I do want it to be here interesting I'm trying to see how this would work if I were to what would be the difference in JS if I were to put it here because I know if I put the image here it would work with js but i've never targeted um the image huh of the like in css i don't know oops okay so hashtag logo all right background url put that in there And of course, I'll have to give it a height, maybe 25 pixels with 25 pixels. Why is it repeating? That's weird. All right, um, maybe 35. Interesting. Why is it repeating? I literally only copied. Whoa, that's a long logo. That's so odd. I don't know why it's repeating. Where's my stuff? Okay, the code's over here. So let me look at it through this view. So it needs to be a little bit bigger. So maybe we'll go with 45 and 45. All right, something like that maybe. And so I'll give the logo itself a border of five pixels white solid so I could see that and I'll select the nav bar also which both are within the header and I'll give it a five pixels white solid line border whoa that's horrible um five pixels not five pc all right and then what I want to happen is that I want the logo and the nav bar to be side by side and so I can do this with two ways I could do this with flexbox I could do it with grid I'm trying to think which way would be better so give me a second um, maybe I'll go ahead and do flexbox. So I'll go ahead and give the header a display of flex, and that's going to turn everything that's like inside the header right into flex items, right? And so now you can see that they're next to each other because by default, the flex direction, which is a flex property, is set to the value of row. Um, so that's why they're now in one row. But if I were to set it to column, they would go back to how they were. Um, of like on top of each other so but I don't even need this because by default it's row um but what I could do is I can give it a gap of maybe like 2 em and that push that puts some gap in it or what I can do is I can do something real cool and that would be to 
do something like justify content and I believe there's a space between option value right and so put spaces in between which is super 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 useful in this case um okay so that kind of works out and then obviously the links I don't want them to be on top of each other I want them to be inline I want them to be in the same row and so I believe I'm going to do the same thing for the nav bar in that case so I'll select the nav bar and I'll oh I already did select the nav bar I'll go ahead and give it a width of maybe 20% of the header see what that looks like so that's a little not that much actually I could do definitely 50% all right so maybe that works out like that all right and so inside the nav bar um, is an unordered list so like if I look at my HTML inside the nav bar is an unordered list and so I'm trying to think what would I want to be the flex container? So would I want it to be the nav bar? Would I want it to be the UL? If I set the flex, um, if I set the nav bar display flex, then the only thing it's going to be centering is the UL. But really what I want are the links and the links are actually um, the LIs. And so it's best if I set the display flex under the UL, the unordered list. So I'll do that. So I'll do, um, the unordered list is an element, so I'll do that, and I'll just set this to display flex, so that all my list items become flex item, and then, you know, that happens. They all become a uh, flex direction row, maybe do a gap of one, of two EM, so there's spaces in between, um, and then I could also do, um, I can align it and justify it within that spot so I could do justify content center which is only a flex property and then I can do align items center so that um, centers it vertically so it's gonna go down if I spelled it right um justify content center align items center and I think the reason it's not going vertically is because the nav bar itself maybe I should also give it a display Flexbox only so that the UL, because if I give it, if I give this, let me give this a border of like pink solid and get rid of this, it's obviously at the top. And so I want the nav bar to have a display flex. Oh, I really put flexbox, that's funny. Um, flex so that I can align it to the center and now it's working. It's also, um, easy now to just do justify content center and that's going to move it to the center like to the right basically in this case like that perfect and i also noticed that there's bullet points so to get rid of the bullet points those are a list item property so i have to target the list item so i'll do ulli or i could just do li and i can just set the list style property and set that to a value of none and that gets rid that gets rid of the bullet points and then the color itself is a link tag property not the link there is a link tag in html but i'm talking about like the a tag so maybe i should say a tag and just i can target that and i can change the color of it to be something like white i can remove the underline which is a text decoration um under the text decoration property set that to none because right now it's set to underline and then maybe change the font size to be 20 pixels to kind of experiment something like that um and then i can look at it over here so that this is what i have so far but i don't want it to be at the center um i kind of want it to be i don't know should i i want it to be like towards the right at the end of the right let me see let me think um i want it to be at the right so what i'll do is i will target the nav bar so where is that and instead of justify content center i'll do justify content end so it goes all the way to the end right so that works out better in my opinion all right and then i think that's good for the um header thingy so on to the content of the showcase i think i'm gonna say like all about bears okay so we'll do that and let me see all about bears and i'm not able to see it because the content is currently black right now so if i could just change the color to be white i'll be able to see it so it's at the top left corner maybe font size something like 80 pixels so it's like really big and i'm able to see it um i could also change the width of the content not the content itself but actually the paragraph content 
paragraph to have a width of, I don't know, 300 pixels. And that's going to kind of shorten it a bit like that. Maybe I want it to be 350, so it's like all about, and then bears, maybe something like that. And then what I could do is I could reload and I can center it. So I can go ahead and change, um, where's the showcase? I can target the showcase and let's see, I can do, I can give it display flex. Um, and then I could justify everything in it to go in the center um, horizontally and then vertically also. So it's going to start looking like that. Um, and then I could also go to the paragraph in itself and maybe do text align center so that bears is at the center like that. So that looks pretty cool. And then I could work with the button. So inside the content, I could also add a button, which could be an A tag that leads to nowhere and maybe, um, Maybe it's like learn more or maybe like explore, um, maybe like learn, learn about bears or just like learn something like that. Um, okay. And then for that, that's like actually in the content box. And so maybe over here, I would also give this a display of flux to kind of, um, justify, the content towards the center within the content itself and then align items also in the center um, and not only that but change the flex direction to be column because by default it's gonna be row that's why they're next to each other now but now it's looking like that and then I could also just grab the paragraph and give it a margin from the bot like um, from the bottom of like 20 pixels so that there's space between the button and the pa um, the paragraph which is all about bears should have probably made that a heading but whatever all right and then for the content a um i just noticed that because i should probably do nav bar under the list list item a there we go um but yeah i'm still using these properties here all right i can use the same properties here um usually i would do a class but like eh. um actually let's do it right let me do it right okay so i'll go and give each of these a class of link or a class of button so i'll do btn okay so less code to right here let me put that in here and over here as well and then over here as well and so for the button itself i'll just um where is it? Over here. I'll just do dot button instead or BTN, right? That's what I have it as. And so now all of them are going to be the same. Um, but specifically, I want to target now this one over here and that's under the content. So that's the A over here. And so for that one, I would probably change the font size to be bigger, maybe 30 pixels. something like that and then I would give it a background and I'm not sure if I want it to be something like white then the color would have to be black and then I could also give some padding so 10 pixels top and bottom 20 pixels left and right and maybe border radius uh, 20 pixels so it's rounded something like that um I could do that but like do I want to and then when I hover over, I need the background to change to something like, I don't know, D3, 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 which is like kind of like a gray color or whatever. I mean, I guess that's fine. All right. And then let's see, all about bears and... Maybe I could just go ahead and change the link now. So I could do like the home, contact, and then I could do like fax. All right, so something like that. Whoops. 
All right, so it looks like that. And then I'm going to go to Google Fonts and um, where's it stuck? I'll go to Google Fonts and get Lado, the font, because that's a good one for text messages, not text messages, <laughs> links. So I already have it here. I just searched it up. I added it. And then I went over here, selected families. I'm going to copy the link. And I'm going to go to my HTML and uh, inside the head tags, I'm going to paste that link in there. And that's basically letting, you know, um, CSS know where this is coming from, like where to get that font, like the Lado font. Because now I'm going to go to my CSS and I'm just going to use the link um, tag <clears throat> if I could find it. Where is it? Oh, it's the button, not the link. Okay, and I'll just paste that in there. And that should change um, that way. I could paste that in there. So now it's looking like that. All right, so I think that's fine. <clears throat> I think this button's too big. I don't know, I don't like it. <sighs> anyway, um, I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. All right, so then maybe I'll also do the same thing for this. Paste that in here and just change it to dot btn when it's hovered over. Um, A. So it slightly changes color. Okay, so now I'm just gonna get rid of any borders that I have. Oops, so get rid of that border, the nav bar, and the logo, and I also need to get rid of the header border. All right, so it's looking something like this. Um, I definitely need to put the header down. So let me go here and give it from the top maybe 20 pixels. Save that, and it kind of looks a little bit better now maybe. Okay, um, and it's looking like this. Um, I just do not like this button. I really don't. I hate this button. Like, it's so ugly. Like, it's literally so ugly. Let me try to fix it. Um, so maybe the, maybe I can cut this down, see if that would work a little bit more. Nope, that's literally horrible. How about I just change this to 25 pixels? Much better, much better, much better. I think I like that better. Okay, so all about bears, learn, and um, I think I'm good with this. Only thing is, though, I'm not sure because all of the images, I added them as a background attribute, and I wonder if I'm able to target that and access that um, with JS. So let me see real quick if I could do that. If not, then I'm going to have to change the backgrounds, the images inside, like put it in my HTML instead of my CSS. So like, let's say I want to change the image, right? So the background image, so that's going to be var um, image. I'll set that equal to document dot and I'll see how to target it. So if I go back to my HTML, um, the image is in the showcase and the showcase is just, where is it? Is here. This is all that there is in the showcase in the HTML. <sighs> so I'm not sure. And then over here is where the background is. So I'm trying to see if I could figure this out. I've never done this before. Okay. So the showcase, it would be JS and then, huh. I don't even know what it is. It's an it's an attribute, but really, what am I targeting? I'm targeting showcase. So I guess I'll do get element by class name, but it's only one class, so I don't necessarily have to do that. So I could get I guess I could do um, get or I could do query. Let me see if this works. Query selector. And I'm not sure, let me see if that works. I'll do console.log image and then open it up here, control shift I. 
Alright, so if I go back to where is it? Okay, let me reload. Um, I couldn't even spell device with, right? That's great. Um, where is my stuff? So device with, not with, and initial scale 1.0, go back and that should be fixed. Okay, so um, it works. It's targeting the showcase, which is actually, hold up, no it's not because it's just showing the showcase. Interesting, hold on. What if... I could always do, okay, get elements by class name. I should have probably done a hashtag for the showcase then. See, that works. It's giving me an HTML collection. Oh, it did. It was working because this is the console, not the element. So it was working. Oh my god, it was working. Okay, let me go back. Query selector and then it returns the showcase, which is pretty cool. All right. So let me see if there is absolutely any way that I could do this. So I could do image dot and it would be an attribute. So maybe the background dot URL. I'm really guessing right now. I don't know how to do this. Let me see if it works. Um, what did I want to change it to? I want to change it to a butterfly, right? So I'll go here and change it to a butterfly. Let me search up a butterfly. Alright, so let's see. Something like, um, let me do landscape. And I would prefer if the color were to be like a dark tone. So let's see, something like... Maybe this, I don't know. Oh no, the one on the, on the top is so good. Hold up, this one. I think this one would be okay. Oh, actually no, because it's squared. Oh, that sucks. Um, so maybe, nope, that's not what I meant. That is not what I meant. I meant the old thing, the other one. All right, so I'm going to right-click copy image address, and then let's see if this works. Maybe, maybe not. Uh-uh, it doesn't. Cannot read properties of null. Me neither. I can't read the properties either, honey. Um, I wonder. So, I can't do this is what you're telling me? So, background is not necessarily... An attribute attribute maybe it's the URL honestly I don't even know how do I target like a I wouldn't know hmm how to target how to change a or how to access the that's not how you spell access access the background of a of an HTML element with JavaScript. Get element by ID, style, background color, how to set, how to get background color. Interesting. JavaScript changes background color, how to change the background color, background URL. To get the background image URL of an element using JavaScript, we can use the get computed style method. Oh, to get the value of the background image CSS property, we get the div with document query selector. Oh, I did that though. I did that though. Wait, hold on. Okay, query selector. Let me see. So I did the query selector. Is it just, I don't even know. 
how would I, so how do I target it here though? Because it's a background attribute, so it's a showcase basically dot background dot URL, and that's what I did in the beginning. So let me see how to get. But I don't have it. Here's the thing. That's the problem. I don't have it as in like I don't have it in my HTML. I have it in my CSS. So maybe it's this. Okay, so maybe I do that. Window dot. Okay, let me see if this works here. So I could do background dot URL. Style of get computed style. What is this even? To get the CSS styles of the um, elements. So it's going to be background or, but I don't think it's a, let me see. Wait, I'm so confused. Why did I put parentheses? Oh my god, I wrote it as if I was writing CSS. Background dot URL. What if I do without it? Hmm, interesting. We love this. Okay, we get the div with document.query selector, then we call window doc at computed style with div to get the CSS. Oh, but for me, it's not the div, it's a showcase, right? So I'll do showcase. Actually, does that make sense? Would it be the showcase or would it be the div? It's not a div, it's a showcase. Can I do dot showcase? Would that even make sense in the syntax? Nope. Okay. Let me see. Dot background image property, and then we call slice to extra. What does this even mean? Do I need to do a background image? I don't want to do a background image. All right, so how about I go here to my CSS and then background image. All right, and so if I go back, oh my God. All right, so if I target the background image, where is the code? All right, so it's a background image URL, but this works only if it's in the HTML. Oh my God, dot slice. How does this even make sense? This is so complicated. Object dot style. Background image. Ooh, do we have to do dot style? Is that the problem? What if I code? All right, so maybe let me get rid of this and then do dot style dot background dot URL. <gasps> Why doesn't this work? Okay. Um, image dot style dot background dot URL. Let's see, what else would this say? So background URL. But it says object image URL equals URL. Okay, so maybe that's the problem. So it would be URL and then put that in here. Would that work? No would let's see what image dot style background image if it was an image a background image 
but then it would be I capital I M G, and then it would be like that. No, literally nothing works. All right, so image URL to specify more than one image, separate the URLs with comma. So the object dot style dot background image. What does that even make sense? Um, document dot body dot style dot background color. So what? But I don't want the body. I want the right. This is what I wanted. So for the showcase would be that. So it would end up being document dot image dot style blah blah blah. So maybe it would be var what I want to change is equal to document dot image dot style dot background image and then I set that equal to the URL. That's not it. So the URL is this one over here. And paste that in there. But then that doesn't even make sense. It's not change, it's this. That's what I need. Hmm. Let's see. Image function, my function. No. Dom style background property. All right, so object dot style dot background color image repeat attachment blah blah blah. So can I just do the same thing? Object dot style dot background. So. Right, I did that. I literally did that. I did style dot background and then I did that. None of this works. All right, so maybe so the image is a showcase. Oh, is it because I did a dot? You're kidding me, bro. Hold on. Showcase. Nope, still um wrong that's great all right so how about i do image which is the object and then dot style dot background which is what i have over here in my css i hopefully i changed that back to background and then it should be url and then i should put in that image over here of the butterfly copy image address just not working Copy image address, paste that in there. Ugh, this is so annoying. Um, what if I just did green? Literally nothing works. Bye. Um, URL dot URL or URL. Style dot background. I kid you not, I have no idea how to do this. Where is the oh never mind. Alright, so there's a function set background, but I don't need that. Okay, so it's document query selector. I selected oh, so you do select the class. Like what the heck? And then that happens. That should work. So if I just go back and add that dot to the query selector, if I have it to something like green. <gasps> yes. All right. Okay. Progress. Progress. 
progress, progress, progress. This is exciting. Okay, so um, when you use query selectors, you would do CSS notations, so you include the dot if it's a class. Okay, that's one thing. And then second thing, in order to access CSS styles, so if I were to put it, like the background not in my HTML, but if I were to define it in my CSS, then I can access that by getting the style of the object, right, that I already got from here. And then I can change the attributes from there. But here's the thing. It works for this, but I'm not sure how to get the URL itself working. So how would I do that? I'm actually going to make sure I cite this source right now because this was really good. All right. Um, how about if I have a URL? Right, this over here, background URL. Oh, so it's, oh my God, everything is within quotation marks. No way, no way. Wait, hold up. If this works, I'm going to be so happy. Background equal to, and then URL, and then, where is the butterfly image? Copy image address, and I think I'm gonna have to put a backlink on both of these, paste that in there, and see if that works. <gasps> oh my god, God is good. Literally, God is good. Let me reload the page. Oh my god, that's amazing. Wow, I'm so thankful. Thank you, God. This was really cool. Oh my god, now me figuring something out. I'm so happy. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So here's the thing. All right. So my mistake was that I was doing, um, I was doing this. I was doing image style dot background, and then I was treating it as if the URL wasn't part of the quotation, and I just did that as if it was CSS, but it's not. I have to put everything inside quotation marks. So whatever I want to change, it has to be within quotations. So I could write the CSS, but it has to be within quotations. But notice that if I do that though. I have to use backslashes in front of each quotation that I use because, again, that kind of defines when it ends. And so I have to do a backslash right before each quotation so that it doesn't break um, the format there. Oh my god, that is so exciting. Okay, so that's one thing I learned. Wow, we love that. Okay, so that's amazing. That's like, in, that's really great. Like, I'm really happy. And then I also notice, maybe I can explore a little bit too. Maybe I want the background position to be a little bit, um, to be more changed. Or like, I want the image to go a little bit more up. So maybe I can try to get the background position also. So I'll do image dot style dot background. And I believe there is a background... But then what would be the background position thing? Would it be background position? And then I could change that to, um, ooh, it does work. Oh my God, that's so exciting. Um, so center, it was what it was um, by default, 10 pixels, and then it moves. Wow, that's amazing. Look at that, that's amazing. So, okay, so maybe, 10 pixels center like that so it's top and bottom left and right so maybe I want them to be a little bit more to the bottom that moves it to the left because top and bottom top. 10 pixels whatever it doesn't matter but it's really really good this is amazing I just really want to use another image because I don't think this is it. But wow, I'm really excited. This was a really cool. That was really cool. I was on the right track though using Query Selector. That was, that was good. That was a good one. All right, I'm like so. I'm sorry. I'm like fangirling about this right now. Like I can't believe this happened. I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I just figured it out. Obviously with the help of <laughs> Geeks for Geeks, of course. This is amazing. This is like in. This is this is just amazing. So let me. Oh, I can't copy. I have this though, don't I? Are you serious? Fine. Just put that in there, rinse it out of here, and make sure to put that over here as my source. Alright, so, um, that kind of fixes things. Um, in that case, I should probably though, that was just experimenting, because I wanted to know if that would work, like how to do that. 
if not then i would have had to you know put my stuff in my html um one thing though i think the container has a border let me get rid of that all right so now let me see what it looks like so far okay i think that's good um all right so in this case there's three things that i could change i was gonna do like you know more stuff like a paragraph but like i'm tired right now so i'm gonna end up you know and to here with like the logo, um, this that I can change, and obviously the image. So I'll do that now. Um, I'll just make sure that I'll call this the template. I'll save that, open it here so I can just have it there. And then I'll pin this. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Um, I'll pin this, right? And then I'll just fork this, which is basically making a copy of it. And this is the one where I'm going to put my code in. So I'll get rid of the template. All right, so I'll paste that in there. That's what I have so far. So the image has changed. Now on, no, I just really have to find another image of the butterfly because Google cannot be using this one. I mean, I could do this something like this. I don't know, maybe this, maybe this one, even though it's like a portrait, maybe I'll, I just don't want it to lose its resolution. So I can change the background to be this. Wrong one. Oops. Wow, I think I'm gonna cry. That's like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Okay, so that's one thing, that's the image. Oh, because it's repeating, oh wow. Hold up, so that's a thing, that's a problem. I could leave it like that, I think it's really pretty. I honestly think that's really pretty. I can fix that though, if I set the background position to be cover, but it should be like that already, or is it not? Background size cover, not background position. Interesting. Do these styles reset? So style dot background um uh background size change that to cover. Ah, interesting. So it does reset. So it doesn't include those. But I don't like it like that. I actually really like it the way that it was, that it's kind of like repeating. I think that's really, 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 really pretty. Like like amazingly pretty. All right, so um, I'll do that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is changing anywhere on my site that mentions bears to um, to butterflies. But here's the thing: for me to ha do that, I have to be able to target that, and I need it to have some sort of like class or ID or tag around it to target it but i need to find a way where i don't have to have that on html and i could just be like okay i could just tell javascript to like just like look at any inner html that is related to bears and change that to butterflies you know so i'm trying to look for something like that because there is something like that for css links like i can do like i can tell js like um look at look for any links that have anything to do with i don't know bears and it would change the link address to whatever i wanted um but i'm trying to figure out if there's any way to do that here so how to access um access what am i accessing again accessing inner html um that has by specific words in javascript element dot let me see how to get element by inner text javascript what's best inner text versus inner html Hmm. Is there any way? Hold up. Let me do some experimenting right now. Let me go over here. Go to my CSS. Okay. So I could do P. Okay. But the way that it works for A tags, it would be like href times equals and then 
anything that says um, anything that would say but I don't need that here though hold on anything that would say learn and I could change I could change the how do I I've never targeted the href through CSS is it a property like that or is it the URL how to set um, href in CSS href blah 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 href oh you do it through that notation oh so that's really interesting um how to change styling using css um a tag a thread property is there a property like that It's an attribute, but is it a property? It has values. So it's ref URL. So is there any way? I've never tried it using CSS. Could I do URL and change it to something like Google? dot com oh well that that was easy okay so maybe this is that something that I could do I don't think it's changing any links I don't even think this is a property so it's a what about href And put that in there. I don't know. How would I do that? Let me go back. I don't even know. That's besides the point. Let me go back. Okay, how to check if an element string includes a specific word? Yes, yes, this is what I want. Yes. Oh my god, when I highlight it, it's yellow. That's so cute. Okay. How do you check if a string includes a specific word value? with JavaScript. By using JavaScript built-in includes method, which determines whether a string contains the specific characters you're looking for. So let's say you want to know if this HTML page contains the word JavaScript. So to find out via JavaScript, first we need to select the element we suspect contains the string value word. We're looking for, in this case, it's the article element. So huh? we suspect, okay, so for me, it would be literally the entire page. So would it be the body? It would be body dot inner text oh so that's what it is inner text we add the inner text property as a filter because we're only looking for the word string value javascript inside the human readable elements if however you are looking for a string value inside any html element me include inside the script and style elements then we use the text content including inside the script and style elements oh no then okay so now that you have declared a variable finding find javascript string that references the entire article so i guess i'll do that myself so um let me go back here i'm trying to experiment here so let me get rid of this what am i doing again js right okay so over here so that's going to be a variable oh my god i really want ramen noodles today okay so find JavaScript. Oh my God. Was that the TV? <laughs> my sister just put the TV on and the volume was like 4%. I forgot if I had music on before. All right. So var find JavaScript string. Um, what am I doing again? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm accessing the DOM. So document dot query selector. And then I'm selecting... For me, I'm selecting, well, let's just be, 
let's just look for content and then why where is my stuff okay but over here is dot inner text which is really interesting all right so let me bring that over here because my code is over here so i'll do dot inner text so then i kind of want to see what that looks like so console dot log um find javascript string save that and go to debug mode control shift i and see what that returns oh my god it does return that that's really exciting okay so now what's the next step so i'm assuming that i'll have to use like the include statement so we add the inner text blah 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 yeah, I did that. Oh, oh my god. Wait, console.log. The thing. Oh my god, include. Wow, this is amazing. I'm learning new things every day. Dot includes. And then I could be like bears. And then if I save this and go here. Oh my god, it says true. Okay, that's perfect. But then how do I target each individual bear that it includes? Let me go back. Where is my stuff? Over here, right? Okay. Yeah, but like, hello, this is like a cliffhanger. How do I? Okay, I know that it's true, but then how do I get those? Oops. How do I get them? Like, how do I get those? Um, the words. So let me cite this word. All right, so this works, but then I need a new purpose. What if I just do bear? Would that still return true? Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, okay. But then my question is how do I target? Like how do I make a list out of all of those things? Did I close it? No, it's over here. So this was really helpful, yes. Um, okay, hold on. How to check if blah blah blah, manipulating DOMs with inner text, how can I change the category? Well, front end frameworks, get element by tag name. Whoa. <gasps> I can index. So could I do, um, what if I could do over here, inner text dot includes bears and then dot zero. Oh my God, wait, let me try that. So I'll go here and then I'll just do dot includes bears and then maybe get the first one because there is only one. And can I change the inner HTML to say something like butterfly? Hmm. No. So inner dot text includes bears. But that would give me a boolean though. That's not gonna. <sighs> Let me see. So it's not. I don't want it. I want the actual word. So I don't think this is gonna work. Or could I change it to, uh, maybe I don't need the inner HTML. What if I do, I just wanna make sense because it's returning a boolean, not something. doesn't work so 
what to do what if i do i don't think that would make sense what if i just it would if i do this then it would turn everything to butterfly just one butterfly like that but that's not what i want i want the individual bear to change the butterfly Hmm. Go back. How to search an elements in your HTML for specific string, and then have those strings be put in a list because that's what I want. As per my understanding, you want to search a specific string, but it's not that. Put the element tags. Index of uh, JavaScript with this case. Let's say you want to search ABC in inner HTML of element with ID container. Var is present document blah blah. blah dot index of ABC will return a starting index of first match of string from inner HTML. If there's no match, we'll return a one. Okay, so maybe I'll try that. So index of. Let me go here, and I'll try. So variable is present. I like that better than find JavaScript string present although find javascript string is a little bit more intuitive so maybe i guess set that equal to document dot query selector um and then it's going to be the content and um, with the dot and then it's going to be of index and then i'll put in bears and then I'll try to do console.log or like two and make sure that logs. So it says true, but is this working or is that working? Um, okay, of index and then Okay, so of index, is that the right function? Oh, it's index of, whoops, index of. Okay, so let me see now, shows up. Interesting. What if I get rid of this and see if it still works? No. Oh, wait. It's because it's not a boolean, so it's not getting rid of a boolean. It's returning an index, or at least setting an index. So maybe what I can do is, just like it said, I can change the inner ML to be butterfly. No, it doesn't work. How about inner? Text. Oops, text. And what if I do zero dot inner text equals butterfly or inner HTML? I'm just guessing everything I can at this point. Oh, okay, so it doesn't work. So I'm trying to figure this out. So index. Um, if blah 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 is not equal to negative one, search index of. Does there need to be to remove HTML using? Okay, how can an HTML element be clickable? No, no, that's not what I want. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, let me go back. H inner HTML. Check if an element contains specific text using JavaScript. How to replace text inside a div element with JavaScript. Sometimes you want to replace text inside a div element with JavaScript, blah, 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 okay, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but also no. What if I want a specific text?
Append child, create text. No, that's not what I want. Nope, that's not what I want either. How to... Okay, let me just think logically. If I were to search for um, certain words using, what was the first function that I used? Um, includes, right? So this returns a boolean, but I don't want a boolean. So I, the index of returns an index, right? And so if it returns an index of that, is there any way that I can collect those into a list or an array? Returns the first index at which a given element can be found in the array or if or negative one if it is not present. So console.log, okay, so we have this which cannot be changed. So we have beasts, ants, bison, camel, duck, bison, and then beast index of bison. So expected output is one. Start from index two. Interesting. So it's four. So it tells me the location of it. So index of search element, element to locate in the array, the index to start, the first index of the element in the array, and then when it's not found. I need it so that it returns the literal word, like the index and the word, like the position and then the word itself. So if veggies index of is equal to negative one, veggies dot push veggie console dot log new veggie collection is plus veggies. What is the, I don't I can't even read that honestly. Okay, let me go back. Um, searching for specific words that's not how you spell specific specific words in html using javascript all right so um dot element search item dot value cool no 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 that's wait what Oh, cool. But no. Find words in HTML page with JavaScript. Yes, exactly. To find the element that word is, you have to traverse the entire tree looking at just the text nodes, applying the same test as above. Once you find the word in the text node, return the parent of that node. So word is a foo, the key is document.body, I don't even know what cur is. While cur is equal to um, document.body.pop, so it, it, it deletes, well in Python, dot .pop deletes the last item, I don't know, of like an array, but I don't know what in JavaScript it means, maybe it's the same thing. While cur is not or not cur well in python the exclamation point means like not i don't know i have i don't know i'm a python girl i have no idea what, like i'm reading and no and no literally javascript was my first language i started learning javascript but like i don't even know right now text content dot match word continue for var i is equal to zero as long as it's less than the nodes then do i plus plus then switch blah 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 that i don't understand no idea what is this let me go out of here i can't do this um javascript string search method um search blah 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 search bar no 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 searching some word with js code example i'm literally so tired right now check if an element contains specific text using javascript yes i can check but can i also retain that element and put it inside an array so that i can order iterate over it and then you know change its inner HTML. Content. 
So maybe text content. So text, what was it, capital C? I don't even know. Is it capital C content? Oh, this is the wrong one. Where is it? Um, where is, I'm so confused. Is this it? Oh yeah. Text content. Okay. Does that return? What does it return? Includes melon. Container dot text content includes melon. Then console dot log. Melon is blah, blah, blah. You know what I think I can do? I think I can figure this out. If the showcase, or in this case, the image, not the image, what am I saying? The content, we're in the content section, right? Content dot text content includes the word bears, then I can create a variable and set it equal to an array, and then I can add that well, no, because this is just true or false, but maybe I can do of index and then this is torturous, like honestly. No, I need something that returns the index and also the content, like literally the word itself, like a database kind of like, like a, like the identifier and then the word itself. And so I can put them all in an array and then iterate over them and then change them, but I can't. And this is the text content. I don't even know. Where is the step? So text content bears. So I can change it to, I'll delete that. And, and I could do console.log and say find Java script string two. I don't know, let me see. Mm, no. I could do dot content dot text content to bears and then do that, but it's not returning anything necessarily. That's what I need to get the text content of the element. I don't even know. String index array index of and last index of. All right, so how can I get this list though? That's what I wanna know. How can I get that array? Hmm. How to have um, every, um, specific word into an array in JavaScript. Oh, every specific word on an HTML, on a HTML page. Yes. Or maybe not all of them, but Nope. How to find specific words in an array with JavaScript. JavaScript split, how to split, string, blah, blah, blah.
How to get an array of all words used on a page. This is the closest thing to what I need right now. I, but I don't need all words. I need specific words. Like, I want an array of all the times that bears is used, even though it's used once, but I, I, at least I want that. I can't even access... I can't even access the first one. I can't even access a single element. I can, though, but, like, I also can't. It's, like, not accessing. It's just telling me whether or not it's true that bear is there. And I can do that with a span tag, but I'm trying to figure out a way to do that without me having to, you know, change the HTML. Like, if I were to just, you know, you do a Chrome extension that claims that I can change a whole web page to, um, like, from whatever to uh, about butterflies, then I need a way for my... for javascript to know the words like to recognize wherever in the page it says butterfly so that it could change it um not wherever in the page it says butterflies wherever like i don't know whatever certain word so it could change it to butterflies and it can't do that if it doesn't have a span tag in my case right because that's the only way i know how so i didn't put span tags around my uh about like around my bear so that's why I JavaScript wouldn't know how to do that. But in real life, like also JavaScript wouldn't know how to do that because not everybody's putting span tags over all like certain similar words. I don't know. I'm trying to figure this out. So how to get an array of all words used on a page of um, certain words used on a page. How to find specific words in an array with JavaScript. I kid you not, but like, let me try something. Reddit. Filtering an array of certain words. Oh my God. Let's say I have an array with some words, blah, blah, blah. No, but I don't want that, though. I want JavaScript to have a huge text file containing all English words. JavaScript array function sheet sheet. How can I have a task or do something if an array contains special value with an element on an... Why does it sound better to say HTML on an on a HTML page? Searching for multiple words in a string. How can I fetch a value? Maybe this. Um, blah, blah, blah. How efficient or fast is it to perform different operations? Nope. Oh my god. How can I fetch the value of an element? How would you write a script that finds the 10 most used words on a website? Help creating a simple function that find, that prints a random. Need help creating a function that turns an array. All right, so maybe I can modify that. Get a list of all pages of the website. Perform a get request to grab the contents of each page. Parse the contents, no. So use a JS to find out what words it puts up. What the heck? Puppeteer, what is that? I cannot right now. Okay, I can't find anything. So I think that's it for today. Um, I'm a little, like, done right now. Um, I did manage to figure out the image thing. Um, you know what? It's just the... I don't know. Um, I'm gonna finish it, right? But like not the way that I wanted to finish it. I could have done it like two hours ago, but I just wanted to find a way that I like I could do it differently. But I guess I'm gonna try to find that some other day. Um, but today I guess I'll just finish it the way that I learned how to do it. So the way that I learned how to do it is I just pretty much go to where there's bears, right? And I do a span and just do this span tag, and I give it a class of animal 
and then I go over here to my JS and all I have to do, literally, let me just delete this also, um, is make a variable called, um, what do I want to call it? Because there's literally only one there. Honestly, honestly, I could just do, so I could do animal equal to document dot get elements by that wouldn't make sense because there's only one bear so instead I'll just do get element by tag well no that's the same thing because it's a tag name I could just give it an ID and I'm just gonna instead of a class I'll just give it an ID because there's literally only one bear so I'll do get element by whoops get element by id and then it's id animal and then now i could just do animal dot inner html change that to butterfly and now beautiful um okay let me make sure butter is it butterflies? Plural, like butterflies. Is it like that? Butterflies? Okay. Just wanted to make sure because I was like, I don't think that's how like, you write it. Flies. Alright, so that works. Um, and then for the logo, that's also pretty easy because I gave it a an ID also of logo document dot get element by id and i can do logo and then i can do logo dot um but i believe it's i believe it's the same thing style dot uh background set that equal to url and then i can change the logo over here i just need to look for a butterfly so butterfly let me try to find something that's kind of similar um what color is it is it a white butterfly I could do something like that maybe and just change the color to be white and then i could click on done right click copy image address even though i can't see the image change that make sure before i put the link so i'm not going crazy later just put quotations here before each quotation marks a backslash before each quotation marks and now beautiful now it's all about butterflies isn't that really pretty? All right, so this is what it's looking like. Um, so it's literally, it went from all about bears, all about bears to all about butterflies. Um, so the image changed, the logo changed, and the anytime there was bear text, it also changed, and that was all using JS. Um, but yes, okay, so just to summarize what I learned today, I learned a new way to target like CSS um, styles. So sometimes um, the way that I learned was that um, I would put like images in the HTML and then like the sources of the images in the HTML and then it would be easy for me to target that with JS because all I had to do was, you know, just um, target the attributes, right? So I would just do dot source or dot href. Um, if it was a link but because for me in my case I had um, like my showcase I didn't have anything like design wise in my HTML like it all was in my CSS and so because of that I had to find a way to access this background URL so I could change it through my JS and that's uh, the way that I did that it was searching uh, Google to to find a way and I started off with something simple, figured that out. I was like, okay, that works. And so there must be something wrong with this part, right? Because this is working. So, and I figured out that everything, literally everything that I'm ever going to put or set equal to, it has to be in quotation marks. So that was one thing. And then second thing was that I need to make sure to not, to cancel out any quotations that would kind of like mess up my syntax and the way to do that is by putting a backslash before the quotation mark and so that way it doesn't really affect you know the real ones um so that's one thing um so i do style so it's the object and then the style of the object and then the you know the property of that object within the css and i can change the value over here 
All right, and then um, I learned that if I want to use other properties, the way that it's written, um, it's just the property name. And if there's like a dash, we don't do dashes, even if it's in CSS. In JS, you don't do dashes. It's considered to be just a capital letter, the next uh, word. All right, so that's another thing. And then, uh, yeah, and then the one thing I couldn't figure out today is how to have JS go through my entire HTML page to find specific words and take all of those words and collect them into an array or a list so that I can iterate over them so I can change them, the inner HTML of those words to be something else. Um, so I couldn't figure that out. That's something I've been trying to figure out for days. Um, so I ended up just putting a span tag over the one word that I wanted to change and gave it an ID of animal and changed it by using get element by ID um with my js and so i did that okay so that's the summary for today i'm gonna go now because i cannot believe i spent i haven't spent this long in a thing for so long